for hypersensitivity. It is also called as delayed type hypersensitivity. And this is one of the uh, hypersensitive immune reactions that is uh, attributed to uh, cell mediated immunity. So uh, you can have humoral as well as cell mediated immunity both uh, giving rise to type 4 hypersensitivity but more so one observes that it is a cell mediated immunity. It is called as delayed type because it takes some time before you actually see an immune reaction. Uh, so let us look at the learning outcomes of the session. Some activated T helper cells on interacting with antigens can secrete cytokines leading to inflammatory response called the delayed type hypersensitivity. The immune, immune reaction is delayed, taking time to develop and characteristically recruits macrophages. Like while if you observed type 3 hypersensitivity recruits neutrophils, in this case it recruits macrophages. It has two stages, a sensitization stage and an effector stage with the former comprising activation of the T helper cells. So it is important that the T helper cells get sensitized. If they are sensitized, then it gives rise to the heightened immune response. A prolonged D, uh, delayed type hypersensitivity can lead to formation of a granuloma with macrophages present within the granuloma that are so active that they release lytic enzymes and they can damage the tissues extensively. So this is something that is a very, a very uh, excessive uh, form of delayed type hypersensitivity. Now type 4 hypersensitivity was actually first studied by Robert Koch. He was a person who worked a lot with tuberculosis and was, lo very, I mean, was look looking at various aspects of tuberculosis and there was a very uh, keen observation that he made and that was that uh, when TB patients are injected with a filtrate and that filtrate was derived from mycobacterial culture, so mycobacterium we know, mycobacterium tuberculosis causes uh, TB. So when a filtrate derived from mycobacterial culture is taken and injected into TB patients, uh, wherever the, the injection is done there, uh, there is what is called as a localized skin reaction. He named it as the tuberculin test, but of course with time we know that today it is what is uh, de delayed type hypersensitivity or type 4 hypersensitivity. So uh, this can lead to extensive tissue damage and in uh, tuberculosis patients we know that lungs are damaged when uh, the condition gets worse. Uh, so, delayed type hypersensitivity uh, um, in, in, uh, in uh, TB patients can lead to severe damage of the lungs per se. There are several, there are two phases of uh, delayed type hypersensitivity. So, the first phase is what is called as a sensitization phase. In the sensitization phase, uh, wherever you have within the cells, uh, uh, intracellular bacteria present and the antigen presenting cells are able to present these bacteria on its surface through MHC which can be recognized by CD4 plus T helper cells and uh, due to this uh, binding of co-stimulatory molecules and the MHC TCR complex being formed you have uh, the T helper cell getting activated and these release several different kinds of cytokines. Now, this leads to formation specifically of Th1 cells. So, generally, uh, what is formed is the Th1 subset. And sometimes, you can also have CD8 cells uh, being, for, uh, being activated. So, effectively, Th1 cells or CD8 cells are the uh, delayed type hypersensitivity mediating cells. So, uh, when uh, one looks at, you know, uh, if the antigen is present close to the epithelium, then it is the Langerhans cells, uh, which are the dendritic cells present close to the epithelium, and they are able to carry the antigen into a lymph node close by and present it on the surface, thereby activating the CD4 plus T helper cells. Now, this sensitization phase can be anywhere from one to two weeks of exposure to an antigen. And the cytokines that are released help 
in the proliferation and the differentiation of T helper cells, you'll have more and more of the sensitized T helper cells being formed. The next phase is what is called as the effector phase. So uh, when the sensitized T helper cell, Th1 cells, again interact with, an anti uh, with a macrophage that contains an intracellular bacteria, and it can it has exposed or it has uh, presented the uh, antigenic peptide on the surface and you have the sensitized T helper 1 cell again interacting with the resting macrophage there is a stimulation of the resting macrophage to become activated so the sensitized T helper 1 cells secrete several different cytokines and chemokines these cytokines activate the resting macrophages into activated macrophages. So the cytokines that are released are very important. So in cytokines, you have gamma interferon, TNF beta, IL-2, IL-3, and uh, GMCSF, that is granulocyte monocyte a colony stimulating factor. You also have chemokines being released such as IL-8, MCF, and MIF. Now, uh, with what, uh, with these cytokines, primarily resting macrophages become active. active and active to such an extent that the amount of the number of class 2 mhcs on the surface increases the tnf receptors increase uh, free free oxygen radicals increase within it nitric oxide increases within it so all of these can make the uh, activated macrophage more uh, aggressive and uh, these can lead to heightened phagocytosis as well so they are able to present the antigens but, uh, much faster. They are able to carry out phagocytosis also much faster. So these activated microphages, uh, due to the presence, they, uh, can release excessive chemokines and cytokines and which in turn is going to increase phagocytic activity because you must understand that more of chemokines and cytokines, you will have more of macrophages getting recruited to that particular site. Now, when you have a very prolonged delayed type hypersensitivity what is observed is that th1 cells and mac uh, and uh, macrophages activated macrophages can kind of form or come close to each other adhere to each other to form what is called as a multinucleated giant cell and uh, these mul uh, this so in this what happens is you have a lot of already activated macrophages present but these activated macrophages are not able to eliminate the uh, target cell and because of which it will keep recruiting more and more macrophages. So you would have basically a granuloma being formed and this granuloma has, uh, has a very high number of activated macrophages. These giant cells that are formed release high concentrations of lytic enzymes and those lytic enzymes then lead to tissue damage. So this is something that happens uh, when you have a prolonged delayed type hypersensitivity. So one of the examples of delayed type hypersensitivity is what is called as contact dermatitis. This can happen because of exposure of the skin to say cosmetics, certain cosmetics, to turpentine, poison ivy, formaldehyde, etc. And these all can trigger what is called as delayed type hypersensitivity. So here is an example of poison oak. So when you have pentadecatecol entering the uh, skin, so uh, when it enters the skin, it would bind to, uh, it would be, it would be taken up by the Langerhans cells, and the Langerhans cells would present it on the surface. That in turn can bind to sensitized Th1 cells. So this sensitized Th1 cells is then going to release several cytokines and chemokines. So for example, gamma interferon is a cytokine that is released. It releases uh, chemokines, which is a monocyte uh, chemotactic factor. And the monocyte chemotactic factor, as the word suggests, uh, is able to uh, give rise to chemotaxis. And so monocytes from the blood will be recruited into the tissue. And once it gets into the tissue, it gets converted. So uh, monocytes get differentiated into tissue macrophages. And also what has been observed is that uh, uh, there is another chemokine that is released, which is called as um, migration inhibitory inhibition factor. And this migration inhibition factor does not allow the macrophages to move away from this area. 
So it prevents the macrophages from migrating away. And so you would have slowly and gradually more and more macrophages getting accumulated in this region where the antigen initially was had entered. So you can see effectively here because of the macrophages releasing lytic enzymes, all the tissues that are around over here can get damaged. And so that is delayed type hypersensitivity. But uh, in order to finally see the erythma, the edema, uh, the response per se, it takes several uh, days, at least 48 to 72 hours. And so it is called as delayed type hypersensitivity. You, in fact, also can see delayed high type hypersensitivity in graft rejection. So when you have transplantation and uh, the, the transplanted organ is not matched properly, then the uh, recipient, that is the person who has received the transplant, will produce a lot of CD4 plus and CD8 plus T helper cells. And those are going to basically eliminate the uh, uh, transplant uh, tissue. And so uh, that also shows what is called as delayed type hypersensitive reaction many a times. So delayed type hypersensitivity is due to accumulation of macrophages after the second exposure of the antigen. In the sensitization stage, the antigen presenting cells activate CD4 plus T cells that differentiate into majorly Th1 cells. These sensitized Th1 cells on getting exposed to the antigen a second time begin to secrete several cytokines and chemokines as well that recruit macrophages to the site. These macrophages become highly active and that is why it is detrimental. These activated macrophages, as, as mentioned, have a greater antigen presenting and phagocytic activity, which leads to severe immune reaction that can lead to tissue damage. So type 4 or delayed type hypersensitivity is a cell-mediated response that builds up after 48 to 72 hours of exposure to an antigen, with mainly monocytes and macrophages being the effector cells. The de delayed type hypersensitivity is a response that is because of intracellular pathogens. Thank you.